we don't have a biomarker. Uh, we don't have a single thing that we can measure in your breath or your blood or your stool or the, your urine or your hair that tells us who does and does not have Parkinson's disease. Um, we have some tools that can help help us in our decision making. Um, so a bio biomarker can be a clinical test, it can be an exam, it can be anything that you measure that helps us better understand who is at risk of either getting a disease or progressing with the disease. I am personally most interested in predictive biomarkers. I want to know um, can we identify people who are going to go on to develop Parkinson's disease and among people who have Parkinson's disease, can we predict who is most likely to get worse fastest? Who is at greatest risk of progression? I am most interested in the predictive biomarkers. Um, the upset, there is a smell card that you can do. So the smell test I think is one of the best tests that we have that we don't use enough. I think primary care clinicians should probably use this more often in people at increased risk of Parkinson's disease. So it's a scratch and sniff card. Remember in the 80s we had those stickers that were scratch and sniff. Well there are kits that you can get and you scratch a sticker, uh, you scratch a plate on a card and it's a multiple choice and it asks you it asks you to, to to determine whether that sticker smells like strawberry, gasoline, cinnamon, or peppermint. And so you smell and have to choose multiple choice and your research person or clinician can grade the test for you and tell you how you compare to normal healthy people. So we know that if you have a poor sense of smell, your risk of Parkinson's disease is a lot higher. Uh, there's a relatively new calculator that's available through the Movement Disorder Society called the Prodromal Calculator and uh, you can put in some information about whether you have a family history of disease, whether you've consumed well water or um, been exposed environmentally to things and uh, you you tell them your risk factors and things like uh, tobacco smoke and pesticide exposure and well water and family history are taken into account and it spits out a number that tells you what is your risk of going on to be diagnosed with Parkinson's disease. Uh, I have a dog detection company called Park 9 where I have two Italian truffle hunting dogs that I have trained to identify the scent of Parkinson's disease in earwax. And so the way a dog walks up and down the track at the airport smelling for explosives, I have dogs that walk up and down the track and smell for the scent of Parkinson's in earwax. And so we're doing research on that right now to, to find sensitivity and specificity. Um, DAT scans are getting better at, at being able to predict people who are at increased risk of Parkinson's disease. But none of these tools is diagnostic. There are a lot of things that are screening tests. They, they are um, able to tell you that you are at increased or decreased risk of developing Parkinson's disease. Um, but none of them definitively tell us which. And each one has its limitations, right? Um, so we're not yet at a place where, where we can all hang our hat on biomarker A and say if A goes up, Parkinson's is getting better. If A goes down, Parkinson's is getting worse. And we're just not there yet. We don't have that. So in the meantime, we kind of have to use what we can. And even though we are quick to say Parkinson's lacks a biomarker, um, truth is Parkinson's has a lot of different biomarkers. I mean, biomarkers are things that um, predict or generate information that kind of leads us to better understand what's coming around the corner. So the American Parkinson's Disease Association has a great website that explains what a biomarker is, what you look for in a high quality biomarker, some of the pitfalls associated with leaning on a biomarker too much. Um, biomarkers do come with side effects, especially cost. Um, wouldn't it be nice if we could give everybody who was 40 years old the scratch and sniff smell test and a DAT scan and have their earwax sniffed by the dogs? Um, chances are we would actually be very, very good at quite accurately predicting who is going to go on to get Parkinson's disease. Uh, the problem is it is really hard to find the funding to do that. Um, so why don't we do that?
Why don't we do that? Especially people who are at increased risk of Parkinson's disease. They have non-motor symptoms, they have a family history. There's no reason those people can't get the scratch and sniff smell test and have their earwax sniffed by the dogs. And we can tell you today whether or not you are at increased risk of developing Parkinson's. So those studies are under, underway and hopefully they will be finished soon, but I do think that our ability to detect Parkinson's is here. It's right around the corner and um, depending on how a couple things unfold over the next year or two, I would say between the prodromal calculator, the upset smell test, our Park 9 dog detection project, and um, DAT scans, and some of these uh, MIBG scans, some of the research that's happening there, heart rate variability things. Um, I think that we are getting very, very close to being able to come up with an algorithm or a way to identify people a decade or more before they actually are would otherwise be diagnosed with Parkinson's. So